thanks for this comment. You're not the only one who's been saying this. So if it's a useful tool for child social emotional development, don't you think it could be useful for adult EQ growth facilitation or team building? Uh, when it comes to team building, one of the things that's interesting here that I've learned is that the gender disparity is getting better on TTRPGs in particular compared to all other games. It's relatively good and getting better every day. Check this out. And the reason I'm interested in this is because I'm interested in potentially developing a TTRPG for professional soft skill development. So here's a meta-analysis of surveys over time of role-playing gamer demographic surveys. And you can see the share of female players keeps going up so that these days it's around 40% female. Being at or above 33 to 35% female is really important because that's reflective of professional team demographics among the healthiest best culture teams. And this is reflective of research from Deloitte and others. This chart is derived from this blog article which refers to GeekWire and Wizards of the Coast Media Summit saying that it's about a 60-40 breakdown these days. A different source from dndresearch.com saying that it is about 38% female in 2020. So we have different sources kind of showing this up into the right trajectory and then a current day number of around 38 to 40% female. All of this data is consistent with the research on women in video game by genre. And so we see that interactive drama or high fantasy MMO are going to be relatively high female participation. Some yellow flags when it comes to a role-playing game would be um, role-playing games are often turn-based. And so we see lower female participation in turn-based games and also lower participation in games that are called sandbox games. I don't know exactly what games are slotted where here, um, but it, it might be worth sort of A-B testing if you're going to do a role-playing game for professional development. Um, try to make it not open world. Try to make it not a sandbox. Maybe consider a concrete scenario. And then there may be things to do around turn-based, or it may not matter so much because the multiplayer aspect may sort of compensate for that. I think one of the omitted variables when we analyze the turn-based strategy genre is that typically these games are single player. Um, and so that would explain lower female participation if females on average are more people focused as we see in the psychology personality literature, right? There could be some mechanical way to have a role-playing game that is not turn-based. It just feels kind of awkward to me. You would need to be enabling players to take turns in a non-sequential non -sequential order with like overlapping turns and that could be chaotic or it could be fun. I don't know, maybe you have a way to pull it off. Power to you.